Welcome. I am Sarah Kate Ellis, the President and CEO of GLAAD, and there is no one in the world that I would rather spend Trans Awareness Week with than the Laverne Cox. Hello, Sarah Kate. <laughs> it's so good to see you. I am so truly honored to be spending this, this time with you. So I'd first like to ask you and hear from you who or what inspired you to be an actress and advocate for equality? Well, when I think about the what, um, and what inspired me to be an actress, I think that it was growing up in Mobile, Alabama. I, I'm from Mobile, Alabama. I was raised by a single mother. I have an identical twin brother. Um, we were very, very working class. I was a very feminine kid, even though I was assigned male at birth. I was always very feminine and I was relentlessly bullied as a child. And the space of my imagination was where I needed to live as a way to survive. And that is something that I've done my entire life. I've always been an artist, a creative person. The space of the imagination has been my savior. And I've been thinking a lot about th th that this year. I've been thinking a lot about resiliency and how I've survived so many things in my life, dreaming and having an imagination of a world that was bigger than what I was living. And I think that is what we need right now, is to begin to imagine a world that is different, that is bigger. One of the most basic ways to be a trans ally or an ally to the trans community and non-binary people is to simply use the name and pronouns they ask you to use. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us a little bit about why this simple act is so important to trans people and how does it contribute to the importance of being seen? Mm. You know, it's very sort of emotional and very personal for me because I think about my own sort of journey and my own transition. I started my medical transition 22 years ago. <laughs> and one of the very first things I did after I started my medical transition was initiate my legal name change because mm -hmm. I was working at a restaurant at the time and I wanted to make sure that I would be referred to by the proper name and that all my documentation would reflect that. I remember getting my um, ID for the first time that had my, that had Laverne Cox on it. And I was so, utterly excited and it felt um having the documentation felt very sort of legitimizing this the unprecedented violence that trans people are still experiencing and it is not always safe to disclose whether you're trans or non-binary it's not always safe and so having I, um documentation or id documents that reflect who we are, how we're presenting, and have those things sort of um, be as cohesive as possible, if that is possible, um, furthers the safety of, of trans folks. The trans folks, I think, present to us the opportunity for all of us to question our own gender in a good way, to interrogate all the assumptions that we've made about our own genders, and discomfort, and I like to remind people that discomfort is not necessarily being unsafe. Right, they're allowing ourselves to sit in the discomfort and ask questions about why we might not be comfortable with someone who's trans is a really great start. What advice can you give to people who might be ready to walk away from a dream? What I would say to that is like, don't give up before the miracle. And sometimes I think too, I just sort of, I really have fully just let it go. And the moment I let it go and surrendered, and was ready to move on, the universe said, no, 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 there's something else for you here. And I think if you are thinking about giving up, if you are not lit up inside by whatever it is that you're pursuing, if you're not lit up by the dream anymore, you should quit and you should do something else. But if it still lights you up, if you can still find that spark, then, then, then you can start a fire. Mm -hmm.